Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Shelter on Base. I'm Cole Kuyper, here with my co-hosts, Carmen Q, Anthony Garcia, and Therese Vignal. This week's special guest is Tyler Heineman of the Giants organization. You might see him behind home plate very soon. Um, Tyler, we have a few topics we want to talk about with you today, but right off the bat, is there anything brand new in your life? <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, my wife and I just got a puppy four days ago. We, we, we were talking to a breeder for a good while, and then we put in a deposit like three weeks ago, and um, we just got her on uh, Tuesday. So definitely a, a big change. How is the process going? Potty training, crate training? It's good. I mean, she loves her crate. Um, potty training is good. She didn't have any accidents yesterday because we're basically hawking her. Um, every time she wakes up from her nap, we put her on her. She can't go outside yet because um, we, we, we live in a condo, so we don't have like a backyard that we know is safe for the dog. So we bought a, a patch of grass and um, you know, every time it's right by her, her crate outside of her play area. So we just pick her up, put her onto there um, and she goes to the bathroom. So, you know, we're pretty diligent, but it's, it's, it's exhausting. It's also nerve wracking for me. Um, you know, she's, she's tiny. So, um, you know, I get, I get scared. I've never owned a dog before. Uh, you know, so it's, uh, it's, it's difficult to, uh, it's kind of difficult to describe, you know, I don't, we have no kids. So it's just like, I, she's, she's completely dependent upon me and my wife. So it's like, you know, it causes me a little anxiety. Yeah, uh, totally. I'm sure I'll get, I'm sure I'll get used to that here soon. I mean, I don't know if you know this, but Cole actually works at an animal rescue and he is a I'm dog. Here. So if he, you need tips, this is your guy. That's right. I, might, I might need some, that's for sure. <laughs> um, before we found out about the dog, what we wanted to bring you in with was, um, what's it like having a, a brother who not only shares your passion, but to some extent shares your success in being a, a baseball player, you know, destined for greatness? I think it's awesome. Um, you know, it's, it allows us to both, you know, we both are pursuing the same dream and we continue to pursue the same dream. And, you know, so during the off season, during times like this, we're able to come together and be together and train together um, and push each other. You know, it's like, uh, especially during this quarantine, it is very easy. I don't know about you guys, but for, you know, for me, sometimes it's very easy to get, to stop being motivated on a certain day. It's like, yeah, I'm a little tired today. Um, you know, I don't need to go to the gym or I don't need to hit. Um, when you have somebody that is, wants to do that and, and is expecting you to be there uh, at a certain time at, you know, let's say 9 a.m. when we work out, it's like you're not just letting down yourself. You go, you're letting down somebody else. And that, that sense of responsibility, like, pushes you that a little bit extra. And then, obviously, at the end of the workout or hitting, you feel good about yourself. But, uh, and then you're motivated the rest of the day. But um, just being able to have somebody uh, to rely on and to push you is, is huge. That's awesome. Absolutely. Have you talked to uh, the other Tyler uh, who has a twin brother? And uh, Tyler Rogers? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've talked to him a bunch. Uh, I faced him a bunch too when we were in AAA. That guy's, that guy's grinded it out as like he's, he's a minor league lifer similar to me and, you know, just never really got an opportunity because he doesn't have anything flashy. But so I'm very excited that he got an opportunity last year and did well. And, you know, his brother obviously has – a little bit better stuff. So he's been up there for a while and he's, he's a solid major leaguer, but I believe, you know, um, Tyler is going to be a good major leaguer if he just continues to get an opportunity. So you awesome. have opportunity that Tyler has gotten from the new Giants organization. When you got acquired by this same organization, what was going through your head that you, that maybe this will be like your chance to actually be given a shot and to prove yourself a little bit more? Yeah, I think, um, you know, just talking to Farhan in the off season, talking to Scott Harris um, and, and Cap, I just, you know, the only thing that's important, I'm 28 years old, I'm getting a little bit older and I haven't really established myself in the major leagues. Um, I believe I can be a major league catcher. I believe I, I belong in the major leagues, but you know, nobody's going to believe you unless you prove it up there. So um, going into the off season as a free agent, I think that um, my main focus was just finding an organization that, 
doesn't really care about really prospect status, cares more about how you do things, how you go about your business, um, you know, and what you bring to the table. So Farhan is huge on, on controlling the strike zone, not swinging at pitches out of the zone, which is something I, I'm very good at. Um, Kapler's huge on leadership. Um, Harris, I mean, you know, they're, they're, all, they're all in tune with exactly what they're looking for. And they basically told me whoever plays the best and whoever is, is showing us that they're, you know, willing to do everything that they can to be on the field is the guy that, you know, they're going to, they're going to want to play. It's not like we bring in, you know, you saw the turnaround last year. So many, I mean, I don't even know. I think it was what 65 players that played in the big leagues last year with the, with the giants. Um, you know, Farhan's not afraid of, of giving people opportunities. And then if they fail, you know, then see you later. And I understand that that's the part of the business. And that's, um, that's, that's great. But, uh, you know, I want that opportunity and I believe the giants were going to give me that chance. Um, and you know, a lot of things like, like Rogers going up last year after being in the AAA for, I don't know, four or five years with the sub three ERA in the PCL. It's like, right when Farhan got here, he continued to go, he continued to do his thing Rogers and then called him up because he, he performed. And, uh, I think that's how, you know, as a player, that's how you, that's the type of management you want to be under. Um, because it is about performance as opposed to how much, you know, money they gave you in the draft or, or, you know, what other, uh, fans or, or bloggers are talking about, you know, um, he only cares about how you do. They all only care about how you do as a player. So, um, you know, I, I think it's a, it's been a very awesome, you know, experience to play for them, obviously, you know, until the whole world went into yeah. shut down. Sure. Exactly. Uh, Tyler, you mentioned uh, kind of just signing with, with the Giants. You signed in January. Uh, not sure how much you know about the Giants fan base. Uh, we're pretty passionate. We're pretty rabid. We're pretty loyal. Uh, we love our, our players very much. Um, and since you're brand new to the team, we thought what better way for, to introduce you to the Giants fans than to ask you some lightning round questions. So I'll ask you a couple of questions uh, and a- answer honest, honestly and truthfully. You are on the Internet. It's the same as being under oath. So just remember yeah, 100%. 100%. That. Right. Yeah, let's, let's do it. All right. What are some TV shows that you've seen every episode of? The Office, How I Met Your Mother, um, Seinfeld, uh, Parks and Rec. Um, yeah. That's a good one. Man, you're like oh. reading Carmen's mind right now. I feel like Carmen uh, is- that, that, that 70s show, Family Guy. That's a lie, actually. That's a lie. I apologize. Family Guy, I haven't seen the newer stuff. So- so a lot of comedies then. I love sitcoms. Love okay. them. Uh, two and a half any, men as well. Any dramas on your list? That I've seen fully? Yeah, Dexter. Um, yes. Dexter. Amazing. Um, I'm in the process of finishing Ozarks right now. Okay. Um, uh, Game of Thrones. Yes. Um, I was going to say, you are now Carmen's official best friend. Are you a boy <laughs> I'm, I'm, a big, I'm a big TV buff. My mom is an executive producer for TV, so oh, no kidding. Um, wow. I've, always been, I've always been into TV. And, and you know, I, I enjoy it actually more than movies for whatever reason. I think just the anticipation when they were on, uh, on air, uh, the anticipation of, of uh, a new episode uh, the next week, so... Tyler, what ending did you prefer, Dexter or Thrones? Uh, Dexter. I, I didn't prefer either of them, to be honest. Yeah, they're but, both uh, bad. Dexter, they're, they're both bad. They're both, they're both, they're both terrible. But I, like I don't. Love for Jack or or yeah. whatever happened to Game yeah. of Thrones. I'll, I'll be honest. I don't. I thought Game of Thrones, um, in my opinion, was one of the worst endings in TV that I've ever seen. Um, and I don't yeah. know if it's because I was so built up and, and you know thinking about how, you know, Aria was going to do stuff, how, um, you know, how all these things were going to connect and they didn't, how the, the, you know, whatever, but it just, <laughs> I, I just, I was very disappointed with the whole last season, except for, you know, that two episode, um, you know, the, the, yeah, we all know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. well, not Therese, Therese doesn't watch, but we know collectively, yeah. I have to know who was your favorite character on that show? On Game of Thrones? Yeah. I liked – well, my least favorite character I'll give you is Bran. Um, 
<laughs> uh, I would say my favorite, like my favorite character was, um, oof, uh, I love Arya. I love her. And I liked, um, uh, oh, I'm forgetting his name right now. Who is, uh, um, who is the one that Arya was always with? The Hound. The, uh, the Hound? The ha- yeah, yeah. The, star, the burn face? Yes, yes. Yeah. They're yes. they're a great duo. Hound. Well, but what was what is his real name? I was thinking of his real name. Sandor. Uh, Clegane. 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 That's what it is. Yeah. Man, we are nerds. We are yeah, huge. Nerds. Except for Therese, she's not. Except for Therese, you're the not nerd of this group. <laughs> uh, Tyler, long road trip. Whose Pandora station are you putting on? Um, long long road, road trip. Uh, I'm doing. I'm doing today's top country. Okay. Nice. Before a game, though, is is uh, hard rock. All right. Oh, wow. All right. Uh, can you tell us a quick, somewhat appropriate joke? Somewhat, somewhat appropriate joke. Yeah. Um, oof. All right, what about a corny? What about a real corny one? That works, yeah. too. We love what it. What do you Better call it. a fish with no eye? What? A fish. <laughs> I was like starting to think of like third eye blind or something. <laughs> that's uh, that's a dad joke right there. That's a dad. I'm not even a dad. That's a dad joke. Dad you are a dad. You're a dog dad. Yeah. It's a dog owner joke. Uh, not including popcorn. What's your favorite movie theater snack? Um, milk duds. I feel like that's a little controversial. Uh, Don't lie. <laughs> uh, karaoke go to song. Uh, John Legend, all of me. Ooh, Ooh very so romantic. <laughs> my wife, my wife loves. I don't. I can't really sing that well, but she somehow loves my singing. So <laughs> we'll make sure to turn down the light. Maybe that could be your your walk up song this year, John Legend. Yeah, no, I'm, I've already <laughs> basically picked my walk up song. It's uh, Magic Man by Heart. Oh, there we go. Also a good karaoke song. Yeah. Uh, what was the last book you read? Uh, Pugs for Dummies, <laughs> 101. That's, I mean, if we're being honest, but, uh, um, real no, book, no. real book. I, I, uh, I, uh, read Relentless by David, Go- uh, yeah, no, uh, you can't, uh, hurt me, David Goggins. Okay. Uh, That's- what was your high school yearbook quote? Believe it or not, most likely to succeed. I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> and uh, like last... most likely to succeed or most likely to be a professional athlete. I actually don't remember completely. <laughs> well, you, you nailed it. You, you... you did it. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> and last one, what's one thing you can cook? I actually like to cook. So um, I like one thing I can cook real well, probably like burrito bowls. Like, I love I love I love cooking burrito bowls. So, uh, figuring out ways to spice the uh, we use um, turkey ground turkey. So figuring out the way to spice the the ground turkey. And I'm assuming you eat your burrito bowl mixed up and not as a layer, correct? Yes, yeah. yes, mixed okay, up. Okay, I just wanted to make sure you didn't have any like serial killer tendencies. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't know that was one, but no, definitely not. There's a pretty good bowl they offer at the Giants game called the Cha Cha Bowl. And you're going to have to get that recipe and make one at home before you become a true giant. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> All right. Uh, Carmen has a, a topic that's very near and dear to her heart and to your heart as well. Okay. I love magic, and I've been told that you are quite the magician. Can I call you a magician? Sure. All right. Sure. Quite the magician. Uh, before I have you show me your tricks, I just want to know, how did you get into this? Um. So I uh... – I went to the Dominican Republic in 2015 to play winter ball and uh, we had a rain delay one day and there was a deck of cards just laying there and no one was doing anything. We were bored. I knew a couple of uh, self-working tricks um, and I showed some. I showed them and they loved them. I loved the reaction that I got. So, you know, I immediately that night went home to my hotel room and I looked up beginner card magic um, on TV or on YouTube and just learned some basic moves and, and showed them, got a better reaction, and then, you know, 
kept learning, kept learning. And, and when I got home uh, a month and a half later, I, uh, I like was going to lunch and, uh, right next, I got there a little early and right next to the, the place was like a little magic shop. And, um, you know, I went in there curious. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to learn a little bit about card magic. And he's like, okay, you got books, you got DVDs, you got private lessons are, are good. I was like, what, 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 what constitutes a private lesson? It's like, well, basically I kind of walk you through everything there is to know about it, handling all everything. And I was like, well, okay, I'm not going to do something with somebody I don't know. Um, could be a scam. And then he showed me a couple of tricks that were blew my mind. So I was like, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll do a couple with you. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. I mean, it was serendipitous. It was right next door. And I feel like maybe it was just meant to be, huh? Yeah, maybe. I mean, who knows? I, I know that, uh, a lot of my teammates uh, end up loving it, and uh, it gives a little bit of relief to, uh, you know, the stress of, of the season. Well, I need to know, have you done any tricks in the Giants clubhouse during spring training, maybe? And if you did, who was, like, most mind-blown by your magic? So, yeah, I've done a bunch. Um, Cap actually had me uh, do a show pre um going out for stretch for one of the uh, practices and uh we got some good reactions i the best ones are always the latin guys always um, <laughs> so for, like i said I, I believe it's because you know they're close to haiti the ones that are in in uh the dr uh they they don't believe it they they you know they don't want know want to know what anything's going on so um you know pablo sandoval was great but johnny cueto was was the best and, and cueto um, but he, he wouldn't come near me. Like he wouldn't, he wouldn't, he, 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 he thought it was, he, he was scared, um, when I did this stuff, but then I, I was like, okay, I want to do a trick for you, Johnny, like in front of everybody. I was like, Johnny, come on. Like, I want you to be the, the, the butt of the joke. And he's like, no, 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 Bobby, no, no, I stay away. <laughs> so like, he, he just, he didn't want to, he didn't want to deal with it. Well, maybe, maybe sometime this year, if we get to that point, you'll be able to do that. Um, uh, but until then, we would love to be fascinated by one or two of your tricks laid on us. Let's see if All you right. can. Um, um, let, me just, let me just move this down a little bit so you guys can see, uh, let's see if we can get a, a good, decent view. Um, yeah. can, you guys see, can you guys see everything? Yeah. Okay. My hands. Okay. So I'm gonna do a trick for you that um, I'm actually just learning. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Um, there's going to be a couple cards in here, um, that have, uh, I done some stuff on, on, yeah. on social media. So like there's, there's a couple cards that have like, Oh, we love you or we miss you. Stay safe. The giants. Um, but don't worry about that. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to mix these cards up and if you were here, you guys would pick the card, but let's just say you pick this one. I'm going to do my best not to cheat. Um, this card is, oh no, it has writing on it. Damn it. Uh, let's just take that one out. Let's do it again. Um, let's choose this one right there. Um, so you guys okay. see the card? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we got it. Remembering it. So I'm going to put it into the center of the deck. Yes. You see the card? I'm going to put it into the center of the deck, do a couple of cuts. Just cut it, get it lost, do a couple of shuffles. And oh, I don't care if I lose a couple of cards, unless that's an ace, because I, I need an ace. But uh, does that seem basically fair that everything is probably mixed up in there? All good above me. board, yes. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look for um, four aces, um, because aces tell me a lot about um, where your card is and what suit your card is. Hmm. So... Uh, we, here we have the four aces, and they're going to help me find your card. So I'm going to show you guys this. These four aces, you see them? Yeah? Four aces. Okay. They're going to help me find your guys' card. So we're going to do – we've got the ace of spades. I'm going to show you guys this. I haven't really done these on camera. The ace of clubs, the ace of diamonds, and the ace of hearts. Okay. The thing is, if I turn over the top card, which is the ace of spades, right? If I turn over the top card – I put it onto the bottom of the deck 
and then I snap my fingers. And if it stays on top, if the ace of spades stays on top, I know that your card is not a spade. Okay. Whoa. Oh my God. Okay. So I haven't so know... the punchline yet, and I'm very, very excited. Yeah, so I know that your card is not a spade. Okay. okay. So we're going to do it with all of them. The next card is the ace of diamonds. Okay. Okay. Ace of diamonds. We're going to put it onto the bottom of the deck. Again, snap. So the ace of diamonds stays on top. It's okay. not all right. your card. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's do it this way. Here we go. Take the ace of clubs. Ace of clubs. I'm going to put it. We have two more. I'm going to put it underneath the bottom one. If it comes to the top, ace of clubs. I don't know so that we know that your card is not a club. Okay. So we know that your card is a heart, right? Because this is, this is the ace of hearts. We are going to hold that in view. So I'm going to move it over to here, right? I'm going to cut these aces into the pack and they're going to find your card. So again, I'm going to leave it in view. And if I just snap my fingers, I'm going to turn these deck around this way. If I snap my fingers and I roll out the, uh-oh. Oh. Huh. <laughs> so wait if that's the ace of hearts then what was this card that's right here the whole no time? It! no no way no oh no. <laughs> get out of here with that <laughs> the four of hearts no your card that's what I thought would happen but i didn't think you could actually do it that was crazy yeah. My mind is blown. Like Tony Cueto wasn't a fan. <laughs> he was a fan. He just got freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing you're 60 feet away from him if you're ever catching him. I know. Seriously. <laughs> that was incredible. That was you're just learning? Uh, yeah. I just learned that probably about three weeks ago that I'm just trying to, trying to practice like and uh, – you know, try and get get everything right. I mean, looks looks good on our end. Yeah. Great. Have you ever, from high school to college to minor leagues, been on the field when something like a hidden ball trick was pulled off? <laughs> Never. I have not. That should be your goal, is to be able to use your flat <laughs> hand for something like that. Well, I've seen, like, those fake hidden ball tricks where, like, catchers throw potatoes and stuff like that. <laughs> but that, that gets you ejected from the game. I don't know how I don't know how I'd be able to do a, a real hidden ball trick. Throw the rosin bag or something like that. Yeah, something like that. I mean, I don't know. Oh my but, gosh. I, I feel like, you know, if we ever get to a place where we can all see each other in person, I need to like see it live. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. No, it's it's actually it's way better live because it's you know, I understand that you guys are whatever, seven feet away from me with this, but um, just being in the, in the vicinity um, and being able to look at it in person, um, it, it's a lot better because I can do a couple of things that I can't really do on camera. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I was like looking to see if you were trying to pull a fast one over on us and I saw nothing. That's it. Well, yeah, you try. I mean, that's the thing. Like you do pull the fast one, but it's, it's when, it's when most people don't expect you to pull a fast mm -hmm. one, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you, do you, have a cool, do you have a cool magician name? Have you been working on a magician name? Um, so when I th was with the D-backs, um, uh, Jerry Naren, the bench coach, called me Hindini, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, That's cool. <laughs> That's really but, good. You know, not really. <laughs> like other it. than that, not really. I like it. Hindini. Well, that's a good question, Anthony. And Therese has more questions uh, from us and some of the fans. Therese? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I know we've been peppering you with our own questions. There's one question I want to ask you, and then we'll go around and we source some questions from fans as well. My question to you is, being a player that's you know played for different organizations, how has the Giants coaching staff compared to other coaching staffs that you've worked with before? And I know you kind of touched on it a little bit in the beginning, at least like with opportunities that you're getting, but maybe more along the lines of what you see with CAP. Um, yeah, so I think, I think cap really, you know, I haven't been in the big leagues for long, but I've been in big league camp for a long time. So I've, I've had managers, um, when I was in camp, AJ Hinch, uh, uh, Tori Lavelle, uh, Lavello, um, you know, uh, Craig council and, and cap. And, and it's, I think cap really wants to get to know you as a person, um, so that he can connect with you. Um, he's very good at, 
listening. Like he, he makes time to, to listen to you uh, as a person. Whenever, you know, whenever there's a downtime, I'm shagging in, in BP, you know, while he's still watching the other guys, you know, he comes up to me or he comes up to another player and he's like, hey, talk to me. Like, what do you got? What is your approach on certain things? Like he wants to know kind of the ins and outs of how your brain works. So I think that, you know, when and if you struggle, um, he is a resource for you uh, because he played. He played for a long time. So he's a resource for you to kind of minimize that struggle and flatten that curve. So um, in that aspect, you know, I, I think it's very awesome to, to play for somebody that you feel comfortable with um, and you feel comfortable going into his office uh, if something's not going right or, you know, if you think that – you know, like as as a as a young guy or a young rookie, not with not much time, it's like he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't shoo you away um, because you know you haven't earned the amount of time. You know, he's he's his door is always open, and that's and the rest of his coaching staffs the exact same way. Um, their doors are always open, and they just want to get you better. Uh, as far as an organization, uh, I think the Giants are incredible. Um, they are willing to do anything and everything to get you better as a player. Um, uh, they're willing to buy any recovery thing that you, that you, that you guys need. So if Longoria or someone's like, Hey, I think this will help us, you know, like they got no problem buying it and, and put it in the clubhouse because they really care about the player's opinions and um, they want to have that communication with the player. So there's not a um, bridge, you know, they want to, they want to bridge the gap. It's not, there's no, they don't want to have a, uh, too much distance where there's no communication. Yeah, it's funny what you say about Cap because we had him on the show last week or something like that. And as people who always interview and never get interviewed, it was very uh, alarming to us when we would ask him, you know, Cap, what do you eat uh, or how do you work out? And he's like, I do this. What about you? And that just yeah. seemed like his, you know, like he does it with, I think, everyone he comes across is asking questions and trying to learn more. Yeah. He, I mean, he just, he wants to get to know you. Um, and he's, he's just extremely, he's extremely intelligent and, um, he's, he's a nice, he's a nice guy and he, you know, he wants to get to know you and, um, you know, I, I respect him and, and you know, I don't fear him, which, which is, uh, something that is nice. You know, sometimes you, you, don't, you, you walk by, Hey, how you doing Skip or whatever, you know what I mean? It's like, no, you know, you walk, I walk by Caps office. It's like, Hey, what's going on? Did you see such and such yesterday? You know what I mean? It's like you can have a conversation and his door is always open. So. Uh, uh, Cap seems like a, a man of many talents guy that has a lot of interest. And so do you also, uh, you and your brother have hosted a charity poker tournament in LA for team primetime. Uh, first of all, tell us a little bit about team primetime. Yeah. So, uh, Team Primetime is a nonprofit organization. There's uh, two parts to, to them. They are a, they started out as an after school program for at risk youth. Um, so, you know, kids in, in low income families, um, kids with parents in jail, um, all, all these things to try and nudge them in the right direction. Uh, so they created after school programs that were, were free to the kids. Uh, obviously paid for from, from sponsors and stuff um, that they just wanted to increase graduation rates, um, decrease juvenile crime and, um, you know, and, and, and try and get people to pursue further uh, education after high school. So um, they did well there and, and that's an awesome thing. But the thing that my brother and I are really um, so blessed to be a part of is um, they created a, uh, a, a thing called the team primetime games where these at-risk youth kids end up being coaches to um, uh, kids with disabilities. So autism, uh, you know, any sort of mental disorder. Um, and it allows them to play in a league against other schools that have um, mentally challenged kids. Like they play in a league, so they get to play in a, a, a basketball league together. They get to play in a baseball league together. They get to play flag football. So in middle school and high school, because a lot of these kids in, in, in these bigger schools, they have no chance of making a team because, you know, there's so much competition and there's so many people vying for an opportunity to, to play. So um, it allows them to um, basically learn 
a lot about how high school sports, middle school sports, kind of how, how it teaches you uh, some responsibility. It teaches you accountability. It teaches you how to time manage your, your schoolwork, your, your stuff, uh, the camaraderie um, that you see, your, your, your boys, just all these things that were so important to my brother and I because we learned a lot of these lessons through our sports. Um, and to not have that opportunity is, is really robbing a lot of people a lot of joy so, um, you know, it, it gives them a lot of joy, these kids. And then it also shows these at-risk youth kids that are the coaches or mentors that play alongside them that their life really isn't that bad. And, and, and you know, there's a lot of circumstances that, that they can't control, you know, like income, it, what happens to their fathers, mothers, you know, but like they're healthy, they're, they're fully functioning and, you know, they can, they can, they can do something and be very successful in life. And I think that them working with these, um, these mentally challenged kids, it like shows them, it's like, you know, it gives them some perspective um, on stuff. So they don't have to go. First of all, it allows you to, to not, it makes them go to these things because you get community service hours. So it keeps them out of, you know, juvenile gangs or anything like that or, or stuff like that. But um, I think in the end, it mostly just, I think that it helps the, the um, kids with special needs, but the most, but, you know, a lot of these, these mentors, the at-risk youth kids end up loving it. And, you know, their graduation rates and furthering education rates are through the roof. Um, so it obviously helps them a lot. Um, and I just, we think it's an incredible cause. It definitely sounds like an incredible cause. It's awesome that you're doing that. Um, and then I also wanted to ask is this charity poker tournament, how good are you at poker? Because during this quarantine, I've been playing a game with my friends every Friday and I'm terrible. I lose money all the time. Um, I'm not really, I'm okay. I mean, I'm not really great at poker. I love, I like to watch people play. Um, but in terms of playing, it's, it's just, it's so long, you know, like a lot of people, if there's no time limit, a lot of people, will take a long time to, to get around the table of aunties and, and all that stuff. So I think it's a, it's a good opportunity for, um, you know, why we put a poker tournament together and casino games. I just, I think it's a good opportunity for, um, you know, people that haven't seen each other in a long time to get together and, and just kind of, you know, basically hang out, um, you know, and it allows them to, to hang out in a, in a fun setting, have some drinks if they want and, and donate to a good cause. Absolutely. I always tell people I'm, I'm, I'm paying for my entertainment of the camaraderie and the, and the trash talk and the drinks, but yeah, I'm yeah exactly. Uh, exactly. I want to, oh, sorry. Ahead. Oh, I was going to ask you about some other charity work you've been doing. Um, and I know your, your dad was a police officer for, I believe you for 23 years. Um, you've recently ordered food from some local establishments and sent it to first responders. Um, tell us a little bit about why that's so near and dear to your heart. Yeah. So, I mean, my dad is, is the brains behind that. Um, you know, he, he always kind of just says, Hey, this could help. And, and, you know, and, and we trust him a lot. So, um, I think it's, it's super important for, for me, um, just because people are working so hard, um, and they're putting themselves on the line and, and risking their lives with, with everything that's going on. Uh, my wife is, is a physical therapist and she works at a hospital. Uh, our roommate, um, one of her best friends is a nurse, works at the same hospital, you know? So it's like these people are, are putting these, the, the police officers are putting themselves on the line and, you know, continuing to go out when everybody's nervous. Um, the, the spread of, of coronavirus is, it, conti it continues to go up and up. I mean, I, I know hopefully we're flattening, flattening the curve now, but, um, you know, it's just, it's a scary thing. Um, and I think that, you know, being able to provide some meals so, you know, that they can save up a little bit more money of theirs. They don't have to pay for lunch or, or, or uh, worry about um, uh, prepping meals at, at night, you know, that they can just have time to relax with their families, um, you know, and, and stay close to their wives, their children, you know, and just not have to worry about, okay, I need to make sure that I have lunch for tomorrow set up and prepped it's like okay we they know that they're going to have a meal from somebody that's not doesn't charge like you know it's it's free to them and they can just kind of 
relax and just focus on keeping everyone safe. I think it's just, it's, it's incredible because they're, they're, they're the real heroes during this time. Absolutely. And if people want to help, either with this or team prime time. Is that what that's called? Team prime time, right? Yeah. How do they, how can they find it? How can they support? Um, so you can always contact me through social media and, and I can get you the link, but um, team prime time, you can go on team prime um, website teach, tells you all about team prime time and everything that goes on. Uh, as far as this first feeding first responders, I don't really have the website. Um, my dad might have the website. Um, but again, if, if anybody reaches out to me, if, if, if anyone knows really anything about me, if you reach out to me on Twitter, uh, Instagram, direct message me, stuff like that, I'm always available. So, um, I'll, you know, I'll give them any sort of, uh, advice or, or, um, you know, I'll give them, if they're looking to do anything, I'll, uh, I can help them out. Great. And I didn't mean to cut off Carmen. That was a really great question that she had. I just was trying to interject some fan questions before my toddler started yelling at me again. Um, I've been on mute quite a few times because of that. Uh, so since we're running a little low on time, I'll try to keep these fan questions a little short and concise for you. So Michael wanted to know, who was your favorite pitcher to catch from the Giants during spring training? Oh, good question. Um, so I think in terms of um, – I think in terms of, of stuff wise, I liked, um, man, um, there's a lot. I, I think, I think the most, the joy, the most joyous person I had to catch was, was Cueto because he basically can put any pitch in any position, in any location at, at any time. So, uh, and you had really had to work along with him, even in, I never caught him in a spring training game, but even in lives, you know, he, he's, he's trying to set up hitters and all that. So, um, just trying to get on the same wavelength as him is a, is a tough thing to do because um, he has his own game plan and he kind of doesn't um, – he's very smart, but he doesn't um, – like he doesn't follow traditional game plans. He follows what he sees. He's been in the league forever and, you know, he's been successful. So um, just trying to learn from him and, and pick his brain um, so that we could be more on the same page. Um, that, w that was real fun for me. I, I really like Gossman. Uh, I think Gossman's really good. Um, he's got a really nasty splitter. Um, he's fun to work with. He's, he's a good person. And, um, you know, I, in terms of stuff, I think Coonrod has great stuff. Um, there's a lot, uh, Melvin Adon is ridiculous stuff. Um, so yeah. hopefully he can, you know, figure out throwing balls in the strike zone, but his stuff is absurd. Um, yeah. And, you know, when he figures that out, he's going to be a superstar. But, um, you know, I, th I think there's a, there's a lot of guys that are not well known yet that, uh, that can be pretty good baseball players um, in the future. And, you know, if given the opportunity real soon. I think Giants fans will take away from your answer was, ooh, there's a lot. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. Um, Nicole wants to know, which Giant were you most excited to meet at spring training? And there I mean, he is. Yeah, you guys can answer that for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty obvious. Yeah, I think we know. Okay, yeah. Obviously Buster. Um, <laughs> I was going to say Brandon Belt? Yeah. <laughs> then you're going to put the underdog personal, personal favorite. <laughs> yes. um, I was excited to meet all those guys. You know, um, Buster, I, I knew Crawford because he went to UCLA. Um, Longoria, like all these guys are, are, are multiple-time all-stars. Uh Gold Glove winners, uh, they got it all. But, you know, obviously Buster for me is, you know, I grew up, again, I was not much younger than him. I think he's 30, I think he just turned 33 maybe. But um, just just being able to be in the same catching group as him and just picking his brain is, has been nothing short of, like, a dream. You know, he's, he's the, like I told, um, I told Kelly and uh, Alex, um, when I was on with them, uh, like last week, you know, he's like a, he's like a prototypical catcher of exactly what you, you want to be. Um, he's a very good player. Um, but he also, he's just a student of the game and he understands how to work with pitchers. He understands how to read swings and, you know, he's very good at calling a game, managing a staff, um, being able to transition from offense to defense. You know what I mean? It's very difficult to, to have all these things run through your mind as a catcher and then go up to the plate and, and still be productive at the plate. I know, you know, last year wasn't 
wasn't the best, but he, he had uh, a little bit of hip uh, issues that he was still dealing with. You know, he's he, this spring he looked amazing. He was hitting the ball hard um, uh, with some more pop. So it's like just being around him daily was was a real treat and something, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, if, if we get a chance to play again. And last question is, Lisa, my eight-year-old wants to know, what's your favorite baseball drill and what's your favorite cereal? Hmm. Um, I really like, well, I loved Fruity Pebbles when I was growing up. Uh, I don't eat those anymore because <laughs> I try and be a little healthier. Um, but um, my favorite drill, uh, as a, as, are you talking as a hitter or as a catcher? Or both? Either. On your favorite Either. drill. <laughs> Um, I'd probably say the T to be honest. I mean, I think the T, uh, the ball isn't moving. Uh, you're able to, if, if you do it correctly, um, and not staring at the T and kind of push yourself in and, and close yourself off. Like if you just take it as an opportunity to feel how your body goes, you can go as slow as you want because this ball is not moving. Um, you can literally just tap the ball and then put another one on there so you feel um, what you're trying to feel. Um, I don't really think there's really anything that you can do other than that, except for maybe uh, creative visualization. But in, just in terms of drills, I mean, the T is always there. You can move it wherever you want. Um, you can take as many hacks so you don't blow out somebody's arm, like your dad's arm or, or anything like that. And, uh, you know, I just think it's a, it's a really, really useful tool. Fantastic. Well, this has been illuminating and you've kind of got me believing in supernatural magic abilities as well, which I didn't expect. Uh -huh. uh, but thank you for joining us. This was another episode of Shelter on Base uh, from me, Therese, Carmen, Anthony, and our new best friend, Tyler. Uh, thanks for watching and tune in next week. We're going to have another special guest for you on Friday. Thank you, Tyler. Yeah, I appreciate thanks, it. Thanks for having me. Hi, Dini. Hi, Dini. There you go. <laughs>